Hello and welcome to Flash or Animation Flash Chapter 9 Lesson 4. And as standard in a, a last time we did these things is it already has it set up with information in it. So um, on Flash 9-33 it talks about changing the uh, text box, uh, making it where you can input data and importing text. Those steps are fairly easy. However, when we start to get into the actual actions themselves, this is the part that I'm more concerned with. So, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to begin by talking through the information as it appears on Flash 9-36, specifically the code. So what happens is I've gone through and I've created a... It says click frame one on the actions layer. So after you created the actions layer, here's my frame one on the actions layer. And it says click after the stop. Make it make sure that after the stop it says var my string string equals quote. What it's doing is it's actually creating a blank line, right? So it's actually making the my string be blank. So I'm going to do um make sure I'm the, on the right one. So at this particular time I've, I've entered in um, this is the way it appears as of a my section A. So basically it's it's making it where if I came along and I did uh, if I tested the movie in this one I couldn't type in here or I could I well, well look at that I can't but it actually doesn't transfer over onto this side right here. <laughs> So what I'm doing is basically it's saying stop, then it adds the event listener, mouse event click, and it captures whatever that event is and then goes to and plays 5, which if we look at our keyframe on 5, that's our calculation here. So all this is allowing us to do is basically input information in here and prep it to move to the next section. Now you'll notice if I go to underscore 5, and I click this particular action box here. Now what we've got is we have a variable called my name that's declared as a string that is blank. Then what happens is it says my name equals input input name box dot text. Now when we named this box right here input name box, what it's then doing because of the way this is set up is it's going to the input, input name box dot text, its property of text, and it's pulling out the value that's in here and it's assigning it to my name. Once it assigns it to the variable nine, my name, it says go to and play five, which means then it's going to jump to keyframe five, and you'll notice it actually combines my, my welcome dot text, which is this, hello, so that's a string concatenation, plus my name. So what happens is it, it works to combine, uh, allow the user to input that in here. What I did in the first section was I imported the text that allowed the user to actually input the data right here. Once we input that data right here, we're going to save it in a variable called my name. Then what's going to occur is as we move once again to this side, we're going to take the variable my name, combine it with the word hello, and put that information up here at the top. That allows a more dynamic input box experience, I guess is the best way to put it. And the way this works in application is, I type in the name, whatever it is right here. I push my enter box. It's now going to go to frame 5. But when, when it goes to frame 5, before it does that, it actually grabs this part right here. And it saves it as the variable my name. So now when it comes along, it has hello, f right? So that's my information that I've done so far. That's pretty good. Now the next thing I'm going to do is, and this is a little trickier I guess, in the action box, in this particular uh, frame 5 right here for this action line, I've actually assigned actions to each one of these buttons. Now what's gone on is, each one of these buttons has its own particular name. So if I come along in my action file, uh, each one of those buttons, one of them is called the plus button, one of them is called the minus button, one of them is called the times button, and one called the divide button. So I import my flash events mouse event, meaning it's waiting for a mouse click. I immediately going to push the stop, so it stops the animation. And there's my my welcome text up my name. Great. 
plus button dot add event listener mouse event meaning that when I click on the plus button right here what's called plus button which is this is what's called plus button it's going to listen for that click and then when it listens for that click it's then going to call add total what add total does it takes in the num1 and num2 right from first number text and second number text so this particular text box right here has been named first num this particular text box has been named second num so what happens is this particular button has been called the plus button this particular button is the minus button this multiply this divide now the names are very very important because what's going to happen is is as i do the event listener listening to those things it says all right grab the first number called num1 i declare the variable called num1 grab it from the first num text box which is right here then i grab the number num num2 grab it from the second num text box which is right here then what i do is i add my total variable which is num1 plus num2 and then I put all that information into total. But notice my add total works this way. Notice my minus total works this way. So in each one of these, I have a variable that declares this number. I have a variable, uh, and that, then I get the information first num and second num. And I do that every single time. <laughs> and then I basically take those two values, and I put it into uh, this last total right here. And in each one of those cases, there's the multiply button, it does the click, how it does the totals, and then it continues down to here, and then it adds the two numbers together, and it then uh, declares the number, except when it does this total, it's actually multiplying it in this case, and then it puts the value back out. Multiplies it, and puts the value back out. So each one of these buttons work independent and calculate slightly different. All right. Now what we'll go ahead and do, and we'll run that. So I type my name. It takes me here. I can take my first number, my second number. Notice each one of them is calculating them differently. Right? Then when I'm done with that, I close it. Now, what's really important is if you happen to mess up the way these values are called, what you're going to do is, for instance, let's say uh, you get this working, and then you move it down here. Well, the next time you get it working again, I, I've done it, I did it by mistake, and I can't redo it. But what will happen is, is, if you don't name all this correctly, it'll flash really quick up on your screen when you run the uh, test code. So what you want to do is, if that happens, just double check to make sure this is called your plus button. And all these things, your minus and a multiply. So it knows, because when it gets two of them working on uh, the same location, it then has a tendency to stutter step as it goes through. All right, well, um, I'm going to try to rearrange some code a bit to try to make this a little bit more efficient. And I'll get back to you as to whether or not it actually worked. Okay, well... The bad news is, is that I did not get the change in the code to work correctly. It had to be exactly the same way. The good news, I recreated what happens when you do the code wrong. This occurs in this particular program. It just kind of goes through. It doesn't want to stop. It doesn't know how to run the program. It goes, oh, oh. And so when this actually occurs, all you have to do is basically come along, close it, make the corrections again. And I know what I did to make the correction. Because <laughs> I was trying to make things more efficient and I broke it. Right. Right here. Here. And now I just double check my code. Make sure it's indented correctly. Then I come along in here. And I do control, test movie, in Flash Professional. And I am working perfectly fine again. All right, well, this actually concludes chapter nine. That means we have one chapter left for me to do these things with, and I'm very, very, very excited. Thank you very much for your time. We'll see you in chapter 10. Good luck.